If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay, so before we start, let's recap what we discussed in the last week, especially like related to the configuration ones. Uh, so I think from source system, we had posted one document, one FI document with the basic setup. Uh, and then prior to that, we have discussed already the Siphon architecture and how the SLT will be set up. Uh, so let me share my screen. We'll start with. So any questions from the previous sessions? Anyone? Okay, so let's recap with the activities. So since we have already covered most of the source part discussed, so can anyone tell what are the activities that we perform in the source system? So from system readiness perspective, what we do is we implement SAP units like it's implemented by technical team. Uh, basis and SLT. So first thing is from system replication, we need to implement uh, first we will be the activating SAP central finance business function. Again, like uh, if you have if you are using S4 HANA system as source system, then no technical notes are required. The system is already pre-built and delivered like to be used for central finance by SAP. If you are using SEC 6. Then SAP will provide the predefined list of nodes. That needs to be implemented. Uh, which there will be one summarized note that we already discussed in the previous session like so that note will contain all the list of nodes that needs to be impl implemented. If you are using the prior versions of ECC, which are out of support by SAP, then you need to create a consulting incident um, to SAP and then SAP will work with uh, the technical team to provide the list of what will be the corrections or what will be the corrective notes, which needs to be implemented in your source system before system is ready for functional configuration by us. Then comes your authorization setup again this will not be to be done from the FI user but then you need to provi provide the authorizations for the users as per uh, the requirement to either the business users the consultants as well as the SLT users and our RFC user as well because RFC will be accessing uh, the data from SLT and central finance system. Then third comes our source source system config that we there is only one config as we discussed that is the Siphon source set table. This will be your only table that we need only configuration that we need to maintain. We can either maintain it directly from this uh, view. If you, no need to remember, if you forget, you just need to go to Siphon IMG. And this will be the only configuration which you will find under the general settings in the source system. So here you can maintain the same. And then recapping of what all this fields are. So this particular field uh, will be 
from which year you want to start the balance postings. Uh, so let's say that you're implementing in 2023 and you want to transfer the balances from 2020 or any prior year. So this you can choose. If you want to like in this field, you will transfer from which year you want the complete set of documents like line item by line item wise. So it will not just transfer the consolidated balance, rather it will transfer all the documents via initial load in the same way it is posted in source system. So for this cases, it will use a technical account to post uh, technical offsetting account to post the balances. So one leg will be your GL account, <coughs> GL account balance. The second leg of the posting will be a technical account, which will define in the uh, central finance. If from this particular period or year combination of these two uh, fiscal year and period pushed this period, everything will start posting as it is in the source system. So if the document is posted to two GL accounts in the same accounts, it will do the debit and credit. Similar to uh, like it will just repost whatever is posted in the source system. Again, this period is how many how till how much time the data needs to be stored in the staging table after the data is replicated to central finance. So let's say you posted one document. It got posted to central finance uh, via replication, but still the data will be stored in staging tables for this period is specified in this. So this the primary purpose. To use this uh, field or to keep the data because you may argue that if the data is already repl replicated, why you need to keep the data and unnecessarily waste kind of system memory because in productive system you will have a lot of documents posted and it will consume memory. So the reason is that sometimes the documents may not be posted. Or there can be some inconsistencies in the posting which you may identify at later point of time. And in case you need to re trigger those documents uh, from the central finance system by after let's say you can delete those document or if there is any mismatch or any undesired results which you see in central finance. So if you have the data in the staging tables. If anyone remembers what is the staging table for FI documents? Cfin underscore SCCHD. Yes, so Cfin SCCHD will be stored header data and Cfin SCCIT will store the uh, item data. So in this case, if you have the data available in this particular table, you can re-trigger the document even if the document is posted. So if it is already posted and not deleted, you will get an error that document is already posted. If you have deleted the document, it will try to repost. Again, uh, this two checkbox initial load. Uh, yeah. Shubham, uh, yes. If you are not mentioned this particular, uh, uh, you are not specify the date uh, from from period to two period. Then the staking table will not store the data, or uh, it will not trigger for the initial load as well. It will trigger for the initial load. So, as long okay. as like the the data storing is considered, like from when will the data start capturing in the CFN C C H three table? So mm -hmm. that will depend on this particular initial load checkbox. Okay. So once you have checked this initial load, like once you have informed system mm -hmm. that initial load is completed, then mm -hmm. system will start doing the uh, start replicating the data in uh, central finance. Not central finance, but rather it will store in the staging table because okay. this is like from source system perspective. What we need is that the system should start storing the data in. Uh, C C C H D table. Once this is complete, then RFC will pull the data from this table. Uh, SLT RFC will pull the data from this table and try to push. So basically, what we can say is once the data comes, starts coming into this table, our central uh, source system we can say is working as expected. Again, yeah. uh, so again, two or three questions uh, which I can say which you will have frequently one is that let's say that uh, you are implementing in 2023 and you are transferring balances from 2020 but there can be some open items which are prior to this year 2020 as well so how will that be treated in central finance because if you transfer open item let's say customer open item 
as balances. So in source system, you you might receive the payment from customer. And so you will definitely receive not might. So how if we load that it has balanced then the central finance, the clearing will also fail. If we just go by the logic which we discussed. So for this. Uh, SAP will always transfer open items as open items in the central uh, finance. So it, irrespective of what is mentioned here, if you have an open item, it will be loaded as open item. So in this case, the treatment will be something like this. So let's say that open item for balance. Let's say balance we have selected as 2022 or anyone. So we have open item posting. So let's say we have one OI account which is posted with 50 euro. And then we have in the same document, the other posting is non OI account. So I will just mention credit. So in this case, what uh, your initial load will some look something like this. So it will. So in this case, like as per our config, what will happen is that you are saying system that this I want it as open item itself that this line item I want in central finance system because we can have a clearing on this account from the source system. So once it is cleared, so I should have the line item details for this particular open item. So in this case, it will report. But for the second account, we have informed system that we don't want this line item as a standalone line item in the central finance. If there are other postings on this account, other line items with let's say 1000 euros, then it should just post one single line item with 1050 euro. So we need only one leg of this document in central finance system. The other leg we don't need at line item level. So for that we'll configure technical account. So that will come when we will discuss the central finance config, but the posting will look something like this. I hope this is clear. Can you please that one one more time? Hmm? For the... Can you come again? Yeah, can you please uh, uh, um, one more time? OK, so let's say that we have. Here we have selected in the like from this year, so whatever we have selected, let's say I will just uh, for this config if we say so here we are saying that I want my balances like till 2020. I just want like from 2020 to 2023. I just want the balances. Let's say I have 10 GL. So and GL balances, let's say for sake of simplicity that every balance, every GL is having 1000 euros. So here we are configuring that for each of the GLs, we just want the balance like in source. If it is having a balance of 1000 euro in central finance also, I want a balance of 1000 euros so that uh, my balances are matching like my trial balance is matching and from there on I will start the replication. But out of this balance. There can be there will be some open items also posted in source system. So open item if you transfer it as balance, then once the clearing comes, the clearing will fail because so in order for so irrespective of what you configure here that here as the balance load that from which year you want to start balance. So it will for open item. It will always transfer all the open items separately into central finance system. So if we come back again to this particular document only. So if this is the document. And this is the config. So if this document is posted in 2020. So in that case, I am saying to my system that post 
like this that it will post one open item and one technical account. So let's say if on this non Y account. Total balance is. 1000 euro. Then it will post for open item. You will have kind of this document and for non open item account. Your posting will look something like this. Non Y account. Credit 1000. And technical account 1000. So for if you have configured this and the posting and balances is like this, but let's say the same document if you post it in. Uh, Twenty twenty three. So in this case, in central finance also, it will replicate. Same way, like based on what is the mapping you have done. In same way, it will be replicated. So. If it is balanced, it will replicate like this. If it is uh, either documents or initial time repli uh, real real time replication, it will replicate the same document which has been posted. Now coming to one more thing uh, which again will be relevant when you work on the real time projects is that let's say that when you are uh, working or implementing a central finance project. You will need to test or do the POC for the documents or whether the functionality is working correctly or not. So in that case, let's say that if you have selected such kind of configuration or the valid configuration as per. The date what data needs to be migrated then it will take days just to finish the initial load and you will not be able to test the data what you want test the functionalities rather because in starting you will not be knowing what what is the exact configuration you will be starting you'll be still in the poc phase where you need to test the functionalities before you can implement or perform the initial load so in that case what sap recommends is perform an empty initial load so that you don't post any data as part of initial load Rather, you just start replicating the documents into central finance. Or in the test system via SLT so that you can test the functionality whether every like data is coming via SLT correctly or not, whether the data is posting to central finance as per the configs or as per the desired configs or not basically to test the functionalities or when you are working in the POC phase. So. You should always perform an. Uh, in uh, empty initial load. So that you can test the replication and your CFIN configuration, whether that is coming as per what you have discussed in the scope or the fit gap analysis, if there is any custom development in the, during the testing phase. Again, this checkbox, uh, I think we have discussed, but again, I will read. So this checkbox you should not do if you are doing your SEO replication as well. So this checkbox, if you have selected, it will transfer the postings which are originating from FI to CO or CO to FI. So let's say that you post one CO documents which is triggering an FI document. So if you do that, it will not transfer it separately. It will transfer the CO document as well separately. But ideally what happens is once the FI document is posted, or once the CU document is posted, if a follow on document needs to be posted like once, like if a, you're posting a FI document and primary cost element, it will generate a CU document as well. So once it gets posted as a FI document, so that FI document will trigger a CU posting into central finance directly. So it will not replicate those follow on postings from source to CFIN. So this part you should only activate if you are not activating the CU replication. So if CO replication is being activated. You should uh, never check this. And we should never this GL reconciliation flag should not be active. So here I have a question, uh, Shubham. So um, this the so system that you are showing here is ECC six, right? So would that would these settings uh, any of them 
differ if it is uh, S4 HANA, the source system is? No, it will not differ. Let, I think I have access to S4. This is S4 system, so let's check. It should not differ. The source system setting will always remain same. However, there will be some functionalities like depending upon your source system, some functionalities will differ in uh, central finance system like you need to configure them differently. But that will not be too much. It will only be like some minor changes like if in, if it is your S4 or new GL is implemented, some postings can differ. So this is S4 system. So in this, you will not find this GL reconciliation checkbox which we had because in S4 your everything is already coming into uh, the SIDOCA table only. So everything is already reconciled. So separate reconciliation of FI and CO is not required. And hence that checkbox is also not there. So let me, I think. systems there is some issue it gets logged out with few minutes of inactivity so this is your ecc system this is your s4 so apart from your gl reconciliation tab everything else is same only You again click on this F1, you will get more information. So as it said, like only like CO2 5 postings which are triggered. If you are not replicating those, so because via your CO postings, you are only kind of transferring the CO posting. All the primary CO postings are coming going via uh, this. FI itself. So as we discussed, I guess in during this lecture when we discussed, so all the secondary CO postings will replicate via CO monitor. All the FI postings and the primary post primary cost element postings which are originating, it will be going via FI monitor. So so this postings like let's say if you're posting a CO and it is triggering an FI document as well. So it is basically whether you, how you want to treat those kind of postings. Okay. So in case like if you go by what will be the difference if we check and if you don't check and CO is not activated. So Let's say if CO is activated, then what will happen is if CO is activated, your CO document will get posted to central finance via the CO monitor and that CO document will trigger again the FI document as per the configuration of central finance. But if you have not checked and your CO <coughs> monitor is not active, so in that case what will happen is a CO, your CO document will trigger an FI document in source system. But since you are not transferring the CO document to central finance, that particular FI document which is generated via this CO that will not never go to central finance. So in that case, you will have one missing documents or those FI documents will be missing in the uh, central finance. So that's the reason we tell system separately whether uh, we need those documents or not. Means FI documents we will need, but how will they go? If CO is activated, it will directly post to the central finance via that particular CO document. If it is not, uh, CO document is not activated. We need to manually send like manually send means if you don't check it will trigger those documents uh, via the CFNS CSD table directly. Is that clear? Okay, so let's discuss what what will be config if we need to perform an empty initial load because again that will be critical in your starting phase of the config itself when you are 
working on the POC. So in this particular case, I will just try to modify this, but will not save it. So company code you need to enter which for which company code you want to perform because again all company code for testing you will check one or two company code out of a scope uh, and then you will only test the functionality so company code you need to select which company code you will be working in the poc phase uh, then start balances it will be empty because you don't want to transfer any balance you want everything to be blank you just want to test your real time replication functionalities then start document you will choose a doc uh, any year in future for which replication is not uh, like you don't have any documents in the system because from here what you are what we are saying to system is that you start replicating the documents from this year onwards and as part of initial load but in reality for that poc phase we don't want any documents to come in a scope so we'll take any year for which there is no posting so i can take let's say 2025 or I can take any year in future for which there is no document. It can be 2025, 2019, 9999. So whichever year in future system allows, you can give. So there is no restriction which year you should give, immediate year or something. You can give any year. Again, period also you can give any, but ideally we can give period as 12 or something. But again, because it will start replicating from this year, this period, so it can be anything. Again, this will also be not relevant. So you can keep it either blank or you can give if the client has already decided for how many months they want to keep the data. Uh, you can give this as well. GL reconciliation, whether you will check it or not. Again, it will depend on uh, whether your replication is active or not. Initial load finished. This will not keep it because we are performing empty initial load. So you we will run those configs to perform the initial load but again this is not required so to perform this will look something like this so if you do a setting like this and then you run the initial load settings so no documents will be posted and real time replication can be activated so in that case it will trigger the after that once that conf initial load is done you can perform your uh, settings in the central finance system and the documents will flow to central finance. So any questions on empty initial load? Because again, this will have to do in kind of every project when you are working on the test system in the starting phases. In this also like what SAP recommends is like uh, SAP recommends like usually what we'll do is like whenever we are working on like normal S4 HANA or for any any project uh, for that matter. So SAP recommends is connect quality system with the quality system or when you are working on quality you should never touch the production data. But in this central finance scenario what SAP recommends is connect your quality system of central finance with productive system of source so that you will have all the data as fresh how the business is posting the documents and then you can test in the real time with the real time data of the project. So this is the recommendation that you should have always your productive system from the source system. Uh, if it is whichever system the business using, connect productive system with your test system. Development system, again, you can test with development, but for quality testing, you should connect with uh, productive system and then test the functionalities, perform initial load, or you can we can actually delete the initial load also if it is done. So that will, once we configure the CFN system, then we'll check it. Okay, any questions from here? then we'll go with an overview of slt system uh, first like what all configuration we do means we'll do, we'll not do any configuration as such as if i consultant in the slt but we need to understand how the configs are done or what are the settings which can be done so that if required we can 
we need to provide the filters what all filters need to be done or if there is any scope let's say that there are 50 company codes you need to give them filters if for CEO postings especially you don't want all the data from CEO to be in the central finance system so you might give business transactions in the SLT so that filters and all we will need to provide to SLT consultants if it is required if not you can work on work without filter also so everything will be uh, coming to SLT whatever is defined in the whatever is coming in the staging tables in the source system. We have so again. I think in starting class we have discussed also that there will be there can be SLT can be used for n number of use cases. So you can use to replicate the data. It's basically a kind of intermediary for transferring the data. So central finance is one of the use cases for SLT. It can be used to transfer other data as well. Like even for BW systems, you can connect via SLT to transfer the data. So there should be whenever you are checking an SLT system and you are working on central, there should be at least one scenario with the central finance for the systems which we want to connect. So this scenario central finance is mandatory. <coughs> Again, let's go back to the configs. So this particular field you will find how many or what are the data which are configured to be replicated from SLT. So this does not mean that replication is on. This does just means that we will have this table set up for which replication this object are part of the scope from the SLT side. So AUFK it will replicate your cost objects. If in SEC HD, it will replicate your FI documents. COBK, it will replicate your CU documents. Again, this cost and KCO, these are still like uh, not part of the scope of this training, but this will replicate your cost objects and activity rates. Again, let's uh, if you see this particular object, you will find one difference that whenever we are replicating cost objects, where whenever you are replicating CO documents, we are using the same tables as what in the source system only for FI documents we have different structure. So can anyone tell what could be the reason why we are using a different staging table for FI documents while for others it is same. Any guesses? OK, so let me tell what is the reason. So the reason is like pretty basic that if you go by the simple design of the FI. So for if you see for the cost object, whatever you are using in source system, like for all the cost objects, when you create in source system also or ECC system or S4 HANA system, it will always be stored in AUFK. When you are implementing central finance, which is again on top of S4 HANA. So if you create any new cost object, it will go back to AUFK table itself. So that means whatever structure you need in your central finance system that is already available in the source system. So same fields you can use for cost object in source system to the cost object in central finance system. So we don't need to create a new field or new staging table to store this data for whether it be cost object for CO document also, COBK and COEP is used to store the data in source system same tables will be used to store data in your central finance system as well but when we talk about fi documents so in for fi documents if we check so here we are using your bkpf bseg and other index tables as part of to transfer the data from it will store the data in source system. It will not have, but when it comes to 
CFIN or S4 system, we need the data to have it in the format of AC DOCA or even the basic nature of the what, are, what are the information we need to post the document that changes. So that is structure itself of the table which in which we need the data changes between your FI for your source system as well as the central finance system. So that is the primary reason the requirement was to have a separate staging table. So in which we can have all the information all together uh, for a seamless replication or you can say seamless data integration. So if you ask me whether would it have been possible if we don't create a new staging tables like currently it's mandatory, but if we don't create then what will happen? So in that case, if you're using BKPF and BSEC, there would be a lot of customization to integrate the data between your BKPF and BSEC from source system to the AC DOCA format of uh, central finance system or any S4 system. To avoid it, uh, there was a need to have the data in the separate staging tables for FI and CO. So if we check back in source system, for the packages which we discussed in the first. Again, it's logged out. If we, so this is the object which will it will get gen, this package will get generated when we activate the FinCF node. So if we again see the tables here, so what are the tables generated? So if you see here, I'm these sorry, are the, sorry to disrupt. Can you just go back and again come in? We have used. In this T code, what we used, or go back to previous yeah. screen? Yeah, can you go back to the previous? Okay. So, previous. so okay. I will do. So, this again, like we don't need to have this. This is again SCAT app we'll use mostly for development. So, in mm -hmm. this, you will have multiple options. So, this package. So, this package is again technical package which will get activated once you activate the FinCF business function. So for our day to day activity, we don't need to have access to this table and probably will not have. But for any package, let's say this is not only for central finance. So whenever you implement any uh, functionality or any new business function is activated. So some package, some or the other package will get included in a CAT. So for central finance, this is the one. And whenever you check any package, you can check like what are the T codes, what are the programs, what are the tables that will get uh, implemented or that are added as part of that package. So if you see again in this transaction, so you'll see only one function was implemented, so one T code. So this is the same T code which we get when we check the CFIN IMG node. So as far as our tables are considered, so these three tables, so these three will be primarily storing our data. So this CFIN ACCHD will store your header data, IT will store the line item and APP will store if the, let's say there are any custom fields which you want to include as part of like which you have activated via like custom development you have done to activate one additional custom field is there in the BSEC and you want to transfer that as well. So that will not come under your ACCHD or IT that you need to perform additional technical implementation to include that field into uh, <clears throat> this structure. So that data it will go under this table, but primarily yes when we are uh, replicating the standard fields, it will be these two tables only ACCHD and ACCIT. And again, this table it will store the clearing, so but we'll come back to this when we check. And this CFIN source it uh, is the one which we have configured. 
Okay, so coming back to Cephinacy CHD. So here you can check whether replication is it's for replication, it is for initial load. Again, going back to administration data. So here you will find the system details and connectivity. If there are multiple systems, multiple system or multiple connection list unit is there, then you need to find your system which uh, you are using uh, to check these details. So here I will go to first admin data. So this here you will you need to check whether what is the source system, whether and that uh, it is correct or not. So let's say that if I am using this ID8 system. And here the source system is m 4 h so that means it was recently changed. It will connect the data from this system to this system. Then also that means that that system which we are using to check the data is not connected currently in the system. So even if the data will get transferred to LTRC uh, in the CFN CCHD tables or your staging tables, it will not flow currently because that particular uh, LTRC setup is missing. Again here you can actually configure again whether you want to transfer via RFC or via the database connection. Here in initial load mode it will basically define how the sequencing is done whether you want to transfer in the sequence. Let's say 10 documents are posted. So whether you want to transfer the data in the same sequence in which it was posted or you want to transfer the documents with line item first and the bigger documents a bit later to optimize the performance and time. Again, this parts we just need to know the overview. This will not be configured by us. It will be configured by SLT consultants. Okay, so this will select how many jobs we want for this transfer jobs. The number you select that will be based on how many <coughs> jobs you want for real time replication, out of which how many you want for uh, uh, in this. Uh, initial load and these jobs for calculation again this is relevant to your initial load most let's say that if you are having transferring the data in initial load and you will have like millions of data if you consider a productive system before it can be executed so this jobs for calculation will calculate the estimated time and estimated jobs required again we just need to know but before that what you need to check is so SM55 if I am not wrong. So in this you need to check which server you are using application instance. Uh, no SM59 you will check and then it will be your RFC connection in SM50 for that particular instance. You will check how many background jobs are there. So in this you can see this dialog user. So dialog user is nothing but how many. So let's say I'm logged in. So I have occupied one dialog user. So at max 10 users can log in at a time. So again, coming back to this background job because we will be needing uh, the background jobs. This settings it will utilize. So we need to check how many it's available in that particular instance. And within that we can give that. OK, how many jobs we want to kind of reserve for by the to be reserved by SLT. OK, target system again, we can check what is the RFC destination name or RFC name for this particular system and. That will be the target system, so if this will differ if the. Your SLT system is a standalone system, so if you remember we already discussed that SLT can be implemented in three ways. On source system on as a separate instance or as, a, as on your S4 HANA system or central finance system itself. So if it is a separate system like here, we are using SLT on the CFN system only. So that's why you just we are giving RFC. If it is a separate system again, we will need to provide the details in the same format which we have given here.
this part yes here it will give the you will have the summarized access in most of the cases if slt is being used on a standalone system so you will might you will not have access to even slt system you just need to provide and if you have access you can view this screen again it will give the views of what all systems what all things are configured in this case in this screen and this is helpful for slt consultant so if let's say that you have posted one document and it's not coming into central finance system but before you have already tested it okay everything is going successfully so this is where when you raise an issue slt consultant will check if there is any any delay from slt or if there is any issue from slt side where the documents are getting stuck in slt after being released from central finance system a uh, source system so in this case if you see yesterday i posted some document so those were inserted into the logging tables or the cfin sschd table but those details have not yet come to central finance or cfin system so in this case that means there is some issue from slt side or there is some issue basically you can say which is stopping the data to be uh, coming in your central finance system again this we should not touch this objects we can view so here this will create logging tables if you want like whenever those logging tables as we discussed this will be created here uh, again let's see it's going into dump so okay so from lt or slt side what we need to know is this will be the cockpit or you can say one stop t code for us where if we want to check anything and for slt consultant they will configure this settings here so whatever we discussed so that they will configure here in this ltrc ltrs so ltrc is for cockpit ltrs is where they will perform the settings so here so the option which i was discussing like <clears throat> what are the filters that you can configure if uh, you want to test something whether you want to limit basically what data you want in central finance system so apart from cfin source set so in cfin source set we just can give company code but if you want additional filters uh, you will inform slt consultant and they will perform the settings here in this so basically what you can see is this slt or ltrc will give you an additional filtering option it will act as in your intermediary for transferring the data like pulling the data from source system and then transferring it to central finance system here you can define what are the objects that you want to move to central finance system those objects of course needs to be within the scope of the central finance solution which is being the, provided by uh, sap So here um, we can give filters. Say, for example, the ledgers that shouldn't be replicated into target or any document types, for example, or whatever. Yes, that technically yes. About. Technically okay. yes. Like uh, you can give like whatever filters you want. So basically, it will be a subset. So let's say that uh, here in your CFIN source set. In Cifin source it, you can only give company code what is what it is in the scope. So after we activate it, it will pull all the data from this particular company code. Let's say thousand or CFS one we considered. So it will pull all the data. But what might be your requirement is that you don't want all the data. Like if you give any filter, SLT system can configure it, and it will be replicated as per that way whether you want it ledger or document type. But yes, functionally you need to function means legally or the from the legal reporting side or managerial reporting side you need to be double sure whether you want to have that filter or not. But yes, you can include any fields which is in your system like BKPFB seg, and then based on that SLT has the capability to filter 
but the primary scope will be this. So anything coming from CFS one, you can give an additional filter if you don't want to that in the central finance system. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I think from SLT side, okay, yes. There is no filter here. Again, here also these parts will not configure, but <coughs> basically when we uh, when they set up this logging functions, so this will create an additional logging table into central uh, in the SLT system, and that will kind of it will be deleted in the real time. Let's say there is one document posted and it has come triggered been triggered to SLT, so then SLT will use that as a kind of queuing group so that it will monitor. So that statistics basically it will come in the here what we saw that. From there, based on those logging tables only, it will monitor how many data have been inserted, updated, or uh, deleted. So once the data is inserted, means uh, the in-source system in staging tables, there has been some data which has been posted. When it's passed on successfully to the central finance layer in the AIF, then it will say, okay, it has updated the record and the data has been posted. And once it has been deleted from logging table or it has been deleted due to any other reason it will get updated here so mostly if we need to be worried about these two parts whether the data which has been created let's say we are posting an efi document or cost object or anything which is in our scope whenever you are posting in source this should be inserted in this slt uh, basically this will be the logging tables of your source system so that should be inserted there and once that is inserted our objective is that it should be successfully posted to central finance system so these two tables uh, are relevant so if there is some delay or there is some issue from slt side or rfc connection so those it can be dragged down from here so if i have to conclude anything what does this table mean at a time like what does this data mean at a time to be precise so what i will conclude is that okay these records have been successfully updated in the logging tables but there can be some issue in either slt or central finance which is stopping the data to be transferred from the uh, to the central finance system again this can be technical issue functional issue it can be anything it just is that there is some issue and it has not been transferred any questions until now because again what we are discussing now it will again form the base for our future discussions as well so if you're not clear or have any doubt, uh, it will you will have issue in understanding the upcoming topics as well. So, the, so here this is not a standalone SLT, right? This is uh, in the source system only. No, this is in CFIN system. S for its system, so okay. Target in CFIN, okay. Yes, but uh, irrespective of where it is, uh, the SLT system positioning, it will not impact your performance. Uh, performance as in if it will impact when there is a data volume is high, but it will not impact the design of replication or how the data is replicated. It will always be same. Only part is uh, this structure will change. So here you are configuring. Here you are saying that okay, source system is connected by RFC, and this is connection. And here you are just giving the target system. So this this config will mostly change 
uh, rest all things will remain same <coughs> and it will affect the performance like how the data is read so let's say that if it is in the source system so as soon as you push the data it will directly come to the staging tables it will not have any dependency on whether the rfc is working fine or not what is the rf means what is the system connection so in whichever system is there the the data will be readily available to slt for transfer and then if you are using any filtering or reporting based on slt so those things will be readily available but as far as like finance functional design is considered the positioning of slt does not play any role in the replication design again to add to that so just like <clears throat> we have model company codes and other uh, kind of standard uh, setups which are provided by sap to kind of expedite the implementation process uh, similar way here for this objects also sap gives some predefined objects all for all these objects and we can use and modify uh, like slt consultants can use and modify the same thing uh, in order for, to connect it to connect it better or you can say to connect to the source system again like let's say that if there is any issues or let's say that if you are stuck somewhere it is not happening so i think in last session we discussed so there is one sap note which is given as sap faq notes so that sap note will uh, give kind of all the answers that is a very big note but again that will have answers to mostly like what could be the note missing because uh, especially for source system there is nothing much conflict so if there is anything let's say uh, for central payment if you're activating there is and the documents are not flowing as expected in the source so most probably are the in 90 percent of the cases the region is uh, either one or the other notes sap notes are missing that needs to be checked and implemented uh, so in previous ppt i have already covered the basic notes which contains the list of notes and which sap keeps updating uh, whenever there is any change uh, whenever there is any change in those note lists or if there is any bug fixes or additional functionalities are created but yes from time to time we need to keep check, uh, checking these notes if there is any missing functionalities or missing data okay, so I think from source system, uh, any queries or any questions, even like what could be the scope or what anything like normally like whatever you are working in the finance scenario. So think about so whenever you are asking questions. So since you are new to central finance, you might be taking some time to understand how the central finance is working. But whenever you are asking question or whenever you are trying to relate to how this would help, uh, you can always use as an example of the current project in which you are working or which you have worked, how those data should be coming in central finance. So maybe and that would help in better understanding of central finance because whatever business process you are currently working on today and that should ideally like if we say there can be something which is out of scope for SAP or out, still not yet in CFIN, but your questions or the project scope should ideally be based on how that will be treated in CFIN, the current processes. Maybe that will help you in understanding central finance better because if we just check on the central finance configs, so there are very limited configs, but process wise, there is a huge transformation. Uh, so, our objective when we are understanding central finance is understanding how these configs will help in creating the business transformation rather than only the particular nodes or only the particular SAP settings which we are creating. So if we have any questions, we can take it up either from process or from the configs which we discussed. If not, uh, can you confirm which system access you got? 
because again the system might change so whatever config which we have done in the past class uh, i will try to create again before we start the next class in source system so that the same thing so that will what do we will follow is we will have this same structure so we created in id8 but i think i see it's currently connected to mh system so <laughs> before that we'll try to create it in the source system again coming back to now from source system and slt side we are done uh, so we'll i will start with the s4 system what will be the basic setups and activity which we need to perform Again, here also in same way as in source system, the first thing that we need to check is whether central finance business function is activated or not. Because if that is not activated, uh, technically we can't do anything before it is activated. So again, for this also, we have the same way. Either we can check in CFIN IMG, whether the CFIN IMG T code is activated or not. And so if it is, see, this is central finance. So here we will find uh, configurations for both source system settings as well as the target system setting because your s for system can be used as both source system as well as target system but if you see in your ecc system when we did we were only able to see the source system setting and that to only one part uh, that particular this table whether this is there or not but when it is s for hana we can we will have the multiple options Again, we can check uh, whether the central uh, this business function either via this way or you can also check in the uh, T code SFW5, I guess if I remember. So here you can Yeah, I think already there is a dumps, but what we can, what we need to see is, I think everything is not coming, but what we need to see is whether we can have, we have this FINS underscore CFIN implemented or not under the basic function set. Okay, let me. I think it's searching. Yes, so here you can see whether the central finance is in this business function should be there implemented. So here this cloud version is also there, but again, this will depend based on which version of central finance you're working on. So since we are working on the on-premise version currently to check so we should check whether this business function is there or not so if this is not there you will also not say anything in the 
सिफिन आई एम जी सो दिस दिस पर्टिकुलर नोट इट सेल्फ विल नॉट फाइंड यू विल गेट एन एर डेट दिस टी कोड डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट again in this we don't need to understand anything from this we just need to just check that whether this is activated or not okay coming back to so in this part we will uh, in the central finance configuration we will structure our activities into two part one is that what are the cfin specific configuration and the second is And the general settings, like uh, as we configured the company codes uh, in the uh, in the source system, so ideally that part will not be in the scope of our project because already the the company codes in source systems are configured and they are working on the processes. So that part we did for understanding, so that we'll have the scope or we'll know what all we have configured, and so that we can map it accordingly. But in central finance system, since we'll be starting with the new box. so we need to configure the general settings for company code as well so whatever we discuss based on the mapping or based on the functionalities as well as the fit cap workshops so we will identify the to be process which needs to be implemented in central finance and based on that we will configure the company code settings in the cfin system so central finance will have if you have to define it into multiple segments so one will be your general settings one will be your cfin related configs then again it will come your mapping related activities where we will map what you have what is existing in the source versus what you created in target or cfin system uh, then you will have initial road error monitoring and replication so that will be the structure of activities in general that we need to perform as a finance consultant or which we need to monitor as a finance consultant again since we are using this particular system for our target system or as a central finance system so under the source system setting we will not be configuring anything it will be <coughs> like we are this is not part of what will be using or not part of our scope so we will be using this particular target system settings and then we'll configure but again we can configure only few basic settings first and then once we have the company code setups ready then accordingly we can perform the additional uh, configuration uh, such as for mapping or for initial load etc coming to basic settings again business function we have already checked again this business function you will find some information similar that you should have must and this is the structure you will to redirect you to the same t code we checked already that it's there or this is implemented again you will not be able to activate unless the license is already purchased by your client again coming back to okay let me show this separately or maybe we can come back again so similar to cfin amg for sap note we will have cfin t code so under this it's already handled into segregated into multiple segments how we want so this t code interface monitor so whenever we are so if this 
error handling is not configured then this part it will be coming as blank so you need to configure your own user id so if i will remove my user id from that particular config so i will not be able to see so let's say that when <coughs> whenever you are uh, let's say logging into your system so try executing this t code so you will not find anything currently here so like the way i am able to see the statistics you will not be able to see so before you can see this what are the data which are stuck you need to find out uh, you need to add your ID, user id in the fin cf node so again this will be done by technical basis but we need to again check whether this is this configuration have been done or not so first is this one so this will be nothing but the interface under which you will be uh, replicating your document so if i go back to your error screen uh, here also we can see so when check the don, uh, documents we will have multiple option one is this one okay so this so under fin cf what we have assigned here is that for all this fico posting i want fin cf and then config id cf1 so similarly let's say that if you have configured anything new if there are anything we can check here this cherry but you can configure your own this interface name space or in interface as well again so this part if you do so once you assign this then only you will be able to see here so this will be uh, this settings will be general under which interface you want to see the data let's say that for this you can have for controlling you can have a different interface or namespace for cost objects you can have a different one so you don't want to see everything in under one interface then you can configure that here but the way you configure this for your runtime replication objects same way it will be visible in your uh, the interface monitor or whenever you are even handling the error to segregate it so uh, let's say so this is one way where you can check in the summarized way so here you will get everything so same thing you can check in the error wave also so it will open a webbed in pro page or you can directly check it here as well so here you need to give the interface so we configured we have FinCF which is delivered by by default SAP standard. So in this, if you want to check only for accounting document, or you can say that this part of the postings, FI documents plus CO documents which are created as from the FI documents. So basically, FI plus primary cost postings or primary cost element posting. So that you can check under this accounting document one so if we see there might not be anything posted so i'm selecting everything yeah this is not set up so we might not have data from our system yes so nothing is posted but once we have the data once you have the data triggered from slt system you will be able to see that here so in this we will have multiple filters so one is that a, this interface you need to select whatever you are giving so this your this ac doc and other things will remain same only thing is namespace you can configure new if there should not be any business requirement because even if you create a new it will follow the same logic uh, but yes there is an if the client wants or if there is a requirement this can be configured yeah and then this will be the data which we are selecting here so this will be your uh, further added selection which you can show this will be mostly from the source system again if you are using uh, during live projects when you are working this differs quite heavily based on which version of s4 hana or which version of cfin client is using so this company code and these additional filters this came into the newer versions earlier it was only logical systems and also but again based on the filters you can create new also via custom development or even by any standard there is some options to enhance it with limited fields of course but this will be 
can be configured the way it is posted. So this will be your selections from source systems uh, to monitor the errors. So whatever documents are posted in each of these interfaces. Either accounting, secondary cost posting or cost objects. So again, we'll have cost objects. And. This uh, cost object and CO documents, we have the simulation as well, so we'll come to know. I will discuss again like why there are two objects while for accounting document, we just have one. So, but again, if there is simulation posting, so that will be part of initial load when we discuss, then we'll discuss more into detail. But again, this everything will be coming under this multiple segment. So if you don't give anything, then it will give everything in the output. Uh, OK, so this part, yes, and also let's say that especially this will be helpful when you are working on the POC. So then there will be a lot of errors and the volume will be quite high. And you want to tackle all the errors one by one. Let's say that you have a particular related to new GL account, new GLs. So then you can give the message class related to new GL. So everything and if you have again segregate can segregate by message number as well. So what was I would say if based on my personal experience. So new GL, I had a lot of errors when working on the starting ones or master related objects. So based on message class, we can group the errors so that at particular point we can tackle one particular group or again it will be helpful when let's say on real time project when you're working there will be few resources which will be having an expertise in particular area while others will be having so in different area so it will be helpful in, in splitting by that as well so that uh, one rather than getting all the errors in one go because during starting phases you will have like millions of error or maybe at least thousands of error so if you open it every time it will take a lot of time to open then load and then one by one so rather than that we can filter by the message class or the error group and then you can work on uh, resolving those, those errors and in this we can use to create the filter again based on what time the document was posted this is message GUID is nothing but I think we already discussed nothing but the unique identifier for any particular document and timestamp. Let's say that <coughs> you have posted one document in the source system. It will get stored in the CFINA CCHD and IT table. So for that, similar to what we use in the company code document number as fiscal year as the one unique identifier. So for central finance, this GUID will be your unique identifier for a particular document on a particular day or timestamp. Because yeah, once for one single document, we can trigger multiple times also. So first time it will trigger get triggered man, uh, automatically, but for if needed, we can re-trigger it second time also. So in that time, or as many times as we need for that matter. So during for each trigger, it will create a new grid. So basically, grid is nothing but one unique identifier per trigger or per database trigger because yes, as we discussed SLT is kind of our replicates based on the database trigger. It's not the bad job or not the bad simulation where it will pick the data and on a particular time interval and then it will load the data. Rather it works on the database trigger. Whenever there is a change in database, it creates a change or the replication entry, which is nothing which can be identified using a message GUID or GUID which we commonly say. Then coming to. This additional filters. So these two are self explanatory, so process successfully. That means it was posted without error processed with warning means it encountered some or the other errors. But those were uh, configured as warning messages in uh, either you can say yes in the message class settings or based on whatever configuration is there those were classified with the warning message so there so those were processed with warnings this application errors and technical errors you will have in the error format let's say that if there is any technical error or system related errors 
uh, from the technical side those will come under technical errors if there is any functional functionality related let's say master data missing or configuration inconsistency those will come under application errors so these four we discussed now coming to in process and canceled canceled messages so canceled messages let's say that uh, there is one good which is triggered to source system so let me check if there is something remove everything then maybe i can show you one by canceling as well in fin see if there is nothing uh, accounting document so i'm trying to check if there is anything on other last two weeks i guess we have some data So if you see this particular document, so here I think yes, so since it's open, I will explain these tabs as well. So for any particular document, so whenever be it of any interface, so you will find multiple options. In, so this will be kind of the standard interface um, which you will see for any error. So whenever any trigger is happening or whenever any database trigger is happening, it will create a unique good and that in turn will create a, an error or posting so there can be multiple statuses so in this particular case it's in error it can be in process and in this so in accounting document also you will have header data item data so this naming will change but the structure will somewhat remain same and self-explanatory so in accounting document you will have header, header data item data tax information and clearing information so again so basically this is the data which is coming from source system and it will include the uh, data which is created as per mapping as well so let's say if uh, you have the company code here and you are posted to map to a different company code so those company codes and other information which you can see here in this table so for each of the segments uh, you will have no you can know beforehand only what data if it is in error you can check what is the data that has come into the for postings to central finance so it's kind of if it is in error you can review the mappings also whether everything has been picking as per mapping or not okay so in this as you can see here because we have not mapped anything for as still yet so it is going into company code mapping error so once you map company code there will be multiple mappings which is based on the company code so then you can get those errors so it, this does not mean that you only have this error in the for the particular document it can be that once you fix this you will get other errors as well which are dependent on this so again in the layout you can check other fields as well here you can see your message class and number as well if you, have, if you think it's not yet configured but yes so here you can see the message class and number what is the mapping so if you see this message class so if you want to segregate based on uh, the error category so let's say that there is a different team for map which is looking into mapping errors multiple teams which is looking into your accounting document error or even some standard errors also you will get related to like whatever you get in the normally cc systems so if there is an inconsistency related to those so those errors will also get so you can again categorize based on the message class and error in the selection and screen itself again we'll come back to aif once we have configured everything because with AIF, 
lot of functionalities and possibilities are there and it's kind of uh, life severe for us as a functional consultant during the implementation so again let's say that we know this is that this map particular mapping is a frequent error and so ideally we will need to go to mapping t code and then maintain so under the function step you can configure directly that okay if there is a particular error go to this particular tab and then prefill the data so i will just give a So if you click on test function, so here you can. F F I N S underscore C F C F N underscore yes yes yes. Here based on what? I think I clicked on yes. So here, if you click on, ideally because in this we can't. Have the parameter but let's say that if you want to open something so you can also define the parameters which needs to be filled when uh, you are using the open so let's say that when we are testing this function we want that this is currently coming as blank so but we if you want we can have those parameters defined as well what are the things which we can configure also what we can do is let's say that when you are working on the implementation phase and you want to hand over it. So we will prepare the documentation or give the documentation. But for most of the time, either we don't see those documentations or we don't have access to the documentation when the when it goes to support team or it's XYZ reasons can be for that or it is not updated. There can be XYZ reason. So what you can do is under this hint section, you can directly maintain if you want to have a maintain any instruction like if this error comes what needs to be done so this will again not perform any activity but when you are working on a project during the implementation you can make life easier for other support consultants uh, by giving an instruction of how, how you resolve this error or for your own reminder also you can keep this that if the this error comes follow these steps or analyze in this way like yeah it is a text format so you can maintain anything which you feel that it can be helpful to you or uh, other resources going forward whenever this error comes again so then we were discussing about the other two status which is cancelled and the in process one uh, so in process is nothing but let's say when you post a document it's let's say posted with a clearing document with uh, one lakh line items so it will take some time to for slt to fetch the data once slt fits uh, gets the data it will transfer to central finance and once it comes to central finance it will create a background job which will post that particular document so it might take some time based on the system availability resource even hours to post a document so during that phase how will you know whether a document which you have posted is in what state so one if it is in process stage you will uh, see just like kind of an error i think in this you can see those icons as well so it will be an error like this so if this is the error you can know that okay the document is still not yet uh, completed with the processing so once the processing is complete you can have either error or technical errors or even uh, you can say that it was posted with warning or not so once it it starts within process then it goes into any one of the status based on the configuration again in process you will have multiple subcategories as well so it can be not processed due to multiple reasons let's say you have posted an open item and clearing also and your open item when you posted it goes into let's say this error so that company code is not mapped so when you post a clearing document it will first look for whether that open item is posted or not. If the open item is not posted, it will not be able to even process because the uh, it will not be able to complete the job because for any clearing document, the open items are kind of prerequisites until the open item is posted. Uh, you can't like the system will not be able to even start working on posting to those documents. So that will remain as until uh, in the in process status until we have the 
open item document posted again for in process also it can be multiple reasons uh, i just give an example of open item uh, the simple example other could be the job was not successful uh, there is one dependent quid so there are at least five to six reasons major reasons which can uh, stop the documents from in processing further or to remain in process again uh, the last status which is the cancel status so cancel let's say that due to some so when we were discussing the buffer state like in the slt side how many records are inserted or not so in that there are two again i will be going a bit technical so there will be one synchronous replication non -synch asynchronous replication so with that what slt can check is it will constantly check the aif status whether a document is posted or not and if it's files finds that is not posted or if it doesn't find a job of the posting sometimes it re triggers that particular document automatically so if it re triggers you will have the two documents uh, two goods not two documents rather two goods in the aif monitor for the same document and then let's say later it comes into the error and you fix this and it gets posted the, so the second guid which you generated it will go into the error that this document is already posted or this is a duplicate guid so under those cases or let's say that you posted uh, that document was not, you are not able to fix that particular document and you asked business to do a manual entry to fix those differences so under those business cases you might there will be situations where you don't need that particular document in the central finance anymore so for you then there are two options so either you keep the that document in the error stage only or you remove that document from this monitor so if you keep that into error state permanently then the risk is that whenever you open this if you will have a document into error and then you need to manually like think back okay i remember that okay this is a document which i don't want and this should remain in error so we don't want that situation to happen because again it will increase our time and it will not add any value it so for that what we can do is we can cancel the document so if you cancel the document so let me try to cancel this one with technical error so if you click on this cancellation so this will cancel so so now you can't reprocess this document or you, this document cannot come automatically now so if you need this document either by some way you need to trigger the document or you can you have to ask slt to reimport this document but from functional side you cannot have this particular guid or i would say personal guid not the replication because there are few other ways also to import it but for this particular guid you will not be able to reprocess or get this document into central finance system so for any such like status which document to know what are the documents if someone has cancelled it from the central finance system let's say business complaints after some times that okay this is the document which you posted in the source system why it has not come into central finance and you don't find into error you don't find it in the posting status so for that you can check who or when whether it was cancelled or not again uh, this log table you can use to find out what log was changed uh, like what were the sequence of activities on this particular uh, guid if i go back to log i will click so here if we see you can have because it was only one that whenever when it came to the central finance already it came into error and then we cancelled it so so here we will see but in real there can be multiple situation that one is that Uh, if we discuss about this so currently it is in the company code error let's say you map the company code so then let's say it goes into uh, i probably i guess since we have not mapped anything probably it will go into gl account mapping error similarly once you map the gl account it can go to other errors as well 
a red letter point at last it will get posted so in that cases by user id you can find the logs here that who did what activity so here if i see so here the first error when the document came on 69 it was with the error that logical system is not could not be determined but then this particular user est admin made some changes and then you can see that this error that error went and this new error came so once you fix this probably you will get a new error then you will get one new message class here if it goes posted then also you will have one with the uh, green icon whether okay by this user this document was posted and what uh, it will not show the activity but it will say the log by when the by how the document was posted Is it any doubts till now? Okay, then coming back to from a side, we have one more thing. This emergency correction. So I will take the application process. This again technical node we don't need is it will just give the technical information. So I will just show it once. Will this get this additional technical information as well? So from functionally, I haven't found this node very much helpful to us, but again, you will have this node. Coming back to this emergency correction. So this emergency correction. You should it, use it as the name suggests only. On the rare cases, which when you are not able to fix the documents uh, directly via config or manual or <coughs> you need something to be posted urgently and you don't have time to configure the mapping or if there's any configuration consistency. So what it will do is so let's say. Oh, I should have given the maximum number. So whenever you want to make any changes in the runtime into the AIF. I think OK for one document which we saw this error was fixed. So let me try to reprocess. So when we do reprocessing. With this icon, so it will try to again repost the documents. So whenever you are trying to fix any mapping or configuration, which you are not doing as part in the emergency correction, you can always try to reprocess like we should always reprocess and then only the system will know whether the document has been posted or not. It means if it can be posted or not. So when I reprocess it, the system tried to repost that document and then it went into this particular error. So yes, so that was that is one activity that we need to keep in mind that after fixing anything, uh, any mapping or configuration or any error, we should reprocess the grid. Then only we'll know whether our fix has worked or not. So let's say <coughs> that this is into this error. And we don't have the mapping ready or let's say we don't have access to map the part, uh, particular company code or the mapping objects. But we know OK this uh, this company code 1000 is not mapped, but it should be mapped to uh, let's say 5000. So in this. You can directly change the values here. So let's say I will give to let's say 001. It will go into error again because it will not be consistent. We, we need to know where all we need to change. But uh, what is important here to know is that we can 
change the values in the runtime via emergency correction. So let's say this and whenever you are doing any emergency correction. OK, I've changed controlling area rather than company code, but OK. So whenever we are doing emergency correction, we should not do the reprocess because if you reprocess whatever changes we have done, let's say I have updated controlling area from 1000 to triple zero one. So that will get overwritten and again it will be changed back to 1000. So whenever we are doing any update in this line item information, we should always go ahead with the repost with user changes. So this repost with user changes will first task whether you want to save the data. Again for saving you have two options. So either let's say that I have clicked on here and I click on save here. So it will automatically first save whatever changes you have done. So now it will update the controlling area from 1000 to triple zero one. And then if you click on repost with your senses, it will just reprocess the document with whatever changes you have made it. So again, if we see the logs, it will come with one current change to that. Okay, I try to do something. So here, if you see, it went into first the logical system error. First time when I reprocessed, this error was resolved and this error came. Again, I reprocessed this time, so no change. So that means it's just saying that the alert was already there. And it came back again with the same error. So it will give the reprocessing log with the error each time whenever you reprocess. Again, let's say that I change it to. Any questions on emergency correction? Again, one more thing that if you restart, let's say that I have posted, so it will keep this data as triple zero one only, which I updated from thousand to triple zero one. But if I restart, click on restart rather than repost with your sense, anytime after I have done this repost with your changes, it will again redirect back to thousand. So that helps, let's say that. You have one, one error. You try to resolve it by changing some field which you thought might work, but it didn't work. So you want to get it back to the original state in which the data came from the SLT or the data in which it was posted. So to revert back all the changes because you might not remember what all changes you did like because I updated your just controlling area. Maybe that I can update five or six fields and after one day I might not remember what all fields I changed. So whenever any reprocessing happens, like normal reprocessing, not repost with your changes, it will go back to what are the changes which were originally came from SLT or source system based on the staging tables. So if I reprocess it again, it will change back to whatever it was earlier. It came back to thousand. So both helps again based on the business need. We need to use it. In on this part. Again, yes, this custom hint message text, etc. We discussed already. This part you you can uh, you can use these sections for any kind of document, be it uh, project, be it uh, WBS cost object or accounting or CO document. You can use it to verify the data. OK, then coming to yes, message class. It, you can limit it how many messages you want. It is again same as the standard when we used to limit the messages. Then emergency correction. Let's see what SAP standard documentation mentions. OK, nothing new. So from this side, any doubt? 
so these examples are uh, not uh, is uh, already posted one right uh, created and posted the transactions and you are showing right yes yes these are not from the configs which we are using because whatever config we are doing it will not come until we map the because we have worked only on the source system we have not created any company code mapping or controlling area like there is no setup for our company codes in the central finance system or slt so those are sample data uh, once we complete the configuration and mapping everything then we can see our data yeah uh, if we go with our example so that would be helpful to understand more in details yes this i am showing to understand the structure because uh, as i said like we need to configure first the because we have created the source system mapping before our data gets replicated we need to configure central finance company codes all the cfin mapping we need to define the mapping obligatories so this will be kind of giving the to be structure what will our to be look like and then we will configure parallelly with the configurations which will be doing for our company code so did you already mentioned in the materials uh, what are the uh, like handbook like uh, steps to be done? yes 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 so those materials are so source system configs are not there uh, the one which we did because uh, that will be again part of your kind of let's say that the original business process that is happening so that we are configuring for configuring new for our kind of just to test the data or create the historical line items you can say so those basic settings will not be there if you need any help we can again like in the coming session if you find any error we can discuss it our recordings are also there but yes the central finance related configurations whatever are uh, we are discussing that is already there in the handbook uh, and we will do it in the sessions as well i think uh, if you have already received the system i guess by today so maybe you can start with the source system setup so that yeah we not put it uh, we requested uh, okay. anything okay i think you has shared one excel file so i did not open it but is it having system details so any doubts uh, up from the session which we discussed can take a few doubts if any if not tomorrow our objective will be to configure the central finance related configs uh, the basic configs not the mapping and all because for mapping and all we need to have the system uh, company codes ready so uh, tomorrow our objective will be to complete the basic uh, configs which are not dependent on uh, the company code structure and second will be to define our corresponding target structure so as we go like this so whatever we created in the source so similarly for target we need to have a basic setup ready so we'll configure kind of almost same things in the cfin and then if the time permits we'll create the mapping structure and all as well so going forward is yes, the training structure will be uh, the basic settings then cfin company code setup and then mapping setup and then again based on how the system is available we can check the real time replication and initial load settings if we see the course curriculum most of this part we have covered is so setting up in source we have done in central plans we'll do this parts we have already discussed is yes, so basically as yes, we'll be proceeding ahead with the remaining sections of this basic setup and config if no questions probably we can uh, from training side we can close the call and nitin can help you with the system access or lm access thanks everyone
Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and we will reply to them at the earliest.